the $1.7 trillion omnibus spending bill Congress passed and Biden signed into law in December included some major changes to retirement money. There are benefits to those who are still working and also to those who are already retired. So stick around. My name is Spencer Ford, CEO and Wealth Advisor with Conservative Financial Solutions, also a certified financial planner professional. And ever since Congress passed the SECURE Act in 2019, which included some major changes to retirement money, Congress has been trying to pass the next bill aimed at retirement. And this bill is called the Securing a Strong Retirement Act, but has been nicknamed SECURE Act 2.0. Congress finally got it pushed through by tacking it on to the monstrous spending bill. And here are a couple of the highlights. Number one is catch-up contributions. Catch-up contributions are getting a bump. A catch-up contribution is a special savings limit the IRS grants older Americans. So for example, in 2023, the standard contribution limit for a 401k is $22,500. If you're over the age of 50, you are allowed to put in an additional $7,500. This is known as a catch-up contribution. Secure Act 2.0 creates another tier of catch-up contributions. Starting in January, starting January 1st of 2025, individuals ages 60 to 63 years old will be able to make catch-up contributions of up to $10,000 annually to their workplace plan, and that amount will be indexed to inflation. It's a pretty nice benefit if you're looking to get some extra dollars in your retirement accounts right before you retire. But now there's a weird caveat in this bill um, when it comes to catch-up contributions. If you made uh, over $145,000 in the previous calendar year, all catch-up contributions at the age of 50 or older will need to be made to a Roth accountant after tax dollars. In my opinion, if you're able, you likely want those contributions going to a Roth account anyways. Um, at this moment, I don't know what the plan is for catch-up contributions if you don't have a Roth employer plan option. Congress doesn't always think that all the way through. Uh, we know that much already. IRA catch-up contributions start at age 50 and are limited to $1,000. So the regular contribution limit for an IRA or Roth IRA in 2023 is 6,500. If you're over the age of 50, you can contribute an additional $1,000 for a total contribution of $7,500. While normal contributions to IRAs and Roth IRAs are indexed for inflation, the catch-up contribution historically has not been. However, starting in 2024, the catch-up contribution will be indexed to inflation, so look for that increase in the future. Number two is matching Roth accounts. Another big benefit if you're still working is matching Roth contributions from employers. Previously, if you made Roth 401k contributions, your employer matching contributions still went into the pre-tax 401k. Now that employer contributions can go straight into the Roth 401k, now, so just to be clear, now employer contributions can go straight into the Roth 401k along with your employee contributions instead of having that employer contribution go to the traditional 401k. This is effective immediately, but it may take employers some time to get the logistics of that figured out. Either way, it's a great benefit because if you're putting in, uh, if you're contributing and you're getting a company match, that company match is going into the Roth 401k as well. Number three is student loan debt. Starting in 2024, employers will be able to match employee student loan payments with matching payments to a retirement account like a 401k. This means that employers who choose to add this benefit will make matching contributions to an employer's retirement plan like a 401k for making payments on their student loans. The thought behind this is to help alleviate the pressure of whether or not to put money towards paying off student loans or saving money for retirement. This provision allow you, could allow you to do both. Number four is big changes to required minimum distributions. The SECURE Act 2.0 raises the age for required minimum distributions to age 73 starting in 2023. The previous age for starting a required minimum distribution was age 72. And starting in 2033, the required minimum distribution age will jump to age 75. 
In case you don't know, your required minimum distribution age is the age in which the IRS starts forcing you to take a certain amount of money out of your pre-tax accounts like your IRAs, 401ks, etc., just so you have the pleasure of paying taxes on those withdrawals. That is what your required minimum distribution, often shortened to RMD, is. If you don't take your RMD, there's a 25% penalty. The penalty used to be 50%, but that's also something that changed with the SECURE Act 2.0. If you turned age 72 in 2022, you still have to take your required minimum distribution if you haven't already. And if you turn age 72 in 2023, then you can delay taking your required minimum distribution for another year. Those are just some of the changes that have come about with the SECURE Act 2.0. There's other changes when it comes to qualified charitable distributions, emergency savings, 529 plans, repayment of qualified birth and adoption distributions, simple IRAs and SEP IRAs. I know this sounds self-serving, but this is one reason why you should be working with a financial advisor who is staying up to date on these changes and the changes that are happening in the tax code so you can take advantage of every possible avenue you have available to you. Taxes will likely be your greatest expense in retirement, even greater than healthcare. Having a financial advisor who's willing to talk about taxes, or sorry, having a financial advisor who's not willing to talk about taxes is like having a surgeon who doesn't remove tumors. What's the point? There's an estimated $35 trillion in retirement accounts across the United States, and I can't think of a larger untapped bucket of money the government has to go to to generate more tax revenue than your retirement savings. You better believe that the government has their eyes on this, which is why it's important to stay up to date on what's happening in the tax code. If you'd like to speak to one of our advisors, please give us a call. Otherwise, my name is Spencer Ford, CEO and Wealth Advisor with Conservative Financial Solutions, Certified Financial Planner Professional, and remember, conservative beliefs, conservative values, conservative financial solutions. We'll see you in the next one.